Hello, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the final stop on the Great Canadian Farm Tour. I cannot believe we're at this point. And no, I'm not Colleen. Colleen's uh, taking the day off today. My name is Joanne Ross, and I'm the Executive Director for Agriculture in the Classroom Canada, and I'm so thrilled to be here today. I'm sorry that I'm not Colleen. I hope I can do just as good a job as she has been doing all through the month. I can't believe we're on our 11th tour. It's March 31st, and it's time to celebrate our last tour for the Can Canadian Agriculture Literacy Month Great Canadian Farm Tour. The last time I saw all of you was on March 1st, and we were on a dairy farm in Saskatchewan. We kicked off this whole event in Saskatchewan. And since then, you have seen so many farms from across Canada, it's been amazing. You've traveled to Alberta to see how sugar beets are grown under the ground. You saw chickens living in free range barns in British Columbia and in condos in New Brunswick. You also had a chance to see how seeds are produced in Manitoba and so many others. Today, we're going to see how fish are grown for us to eat. And as we all know, fish live in water. So I'm looking very forward to uh, understanding about under the water today. It will be really interesting. Before we get started, I would love to see where everyone is joining us from today. So feel free to put that in the chat as usual. And um, we also, of course, are gonna use the chat to ask questions for our farmer throughout the tour today. Okay, let's see where some of you are joining from today. We have Terry Parks class from Pasadena, Newfoundland. Great to see you. Good morning. And from Rodden, Nova Scotia. I've been there. We have Jillian Greeno's class. Really excited to hear your questions. And we have someone here from PEI, Karen Mullally's class. Welcome to everybody in grade 3B. We also have a virtual school in St. Isidore in Kitchener, Ontario. Lauren Houston's class. Welcome. And uh, we have Joanne Burt. She is with her class, grade four, in Woodstock, New Brunswick. So it's so great to see so many of you from all over the country. And I know some of the provinces are on spring break, but you can always watch us on YouTube later. We're so excited to be hosting this tour in partnership with our provincial member in Ontario, Agscape. Um, I would love to enjoy or invite my friend Taylor to the screen here. Taylor's the executive director of Agscape. And welcome, Taylor. Great to have you here this morning. Good morning, Joanne. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here as well uh, to join in on the learning about fish farms with all of our students and teachers here today. Uh, and just to get things started off, um, in recognition of the people whose traditional lands we're taking a tour uh, from today, we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Anishinaabek, Six Nations of the Grand River, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat, Wyandot, Wyandot peoples on whose traditional territories we gather and, though, and whose ancestors signed treaties with our ancestors. We recognize also the Métis and Inuit whose ancestors shared this land and these waters. May we all, as treaty people, live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all its diverse peoples. Thank you, Taylor. Great to have you here today. We're going to have lots of fun. And since it's the last great Canadian farm tour stop, we're going to make it extra special. And I really want to welcome another great friend of Agriculture in the Classroom Canada, the Honourable Minister, Mar sorry, Honourable Minister, I'm trying to say too many words, of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, Minister Marie-Claude Bibeau. She's also going to be our co-host. Welcome, Minister. So great to see you from Ottawa this morning. It is so good to be with you. So as Joanne said, my name is Marie-Claude, and you can hear from my accent that I come from Quebec. It's, uh, it's about an hour and a half from Montreal, and it's uh, three hours and a half from Ottawa, just to give you a, a, a range. So I'm uh, really happy to be with you all today. So as the Minister of Agriculture, um, I work, I am in the team of Prime Minister Justin, Justin Trudeau, and uh, my responsibility is to support farmers all across Canada. So I'm really happy to be with you today and to have this opportunity to tour a fish farm. 
And even though you are working with all sorts of farmers across Canada, I bet that we even have you learned something new today, Minister. I'm sure I will. Looking forward to our discussion a little later. Look forward to it. Good morning, Minister Bibo. It's so great to have you here today. I'm really excited to be on this call as well. Um, and I, just, I was just wondering, have you heard about the social media contest that we have going on during the Great Canadian Farm Tour? A little, yes. And I'm uh, eager to see uh, who the winners are going to be. Yes, and we've had so many entries across from across the country through the 11 tours. And what we've been doing is asking teachers to share photos of their classes participating in the Great Canadian Farm Tour. And you can see some of them coming up on the screen there. There has been so many entries and so many fun pictures for us to look at uh, students learning. And it's really exciting to see all the kids having so much fun. As a final reminder to the teachers, you have until April 14th. So don't worry, you can still get in on the contest. We want you to submit your entries and just make sure you use the hashtag, hashtag GCFT, which is Great Canadian Farm Tour, of course, 22 contest when uploading your photos. So there's still time to get in on the contest. And as one other quick reminder, don't forget to have your Great Canadian Farm Tour activity books and passports ready and in front of you during the tour today. You'll be receiving the last mystery word to put in your passport and at some point during the tour, which will appear in the top left corner of your screen. So make sure you're watching that top left corner. You bet. Taylor, okay, let's start talking about Ontario. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the foods that are grown in your province? Definitely. So we're, we have a lot of diverse foods grown in our province. Um, we're, we're a big province and some of these include strawberries, apples, corn, potatoes, asparagus, peaches, and so much more. Mm. Uh, today, we're really excited though to learn more about aquaculture and fish farming here in Ontario. And I'm without further more. ado, I would like, to, on that note, I'd like to introduce you to all to our fish farmer today, RJ. So welcome, RJ. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And RJ is coming to us today from his farm, Cedar Crest Trout Farms, um, which he's an owner of with his family. Uh, a second, they're a second generation family business that has five trout hatcheries and a processing plant near Hanover, Ontario. Um, and Cedar Crest is the primary supplier of juvenile rainbow trout called fingerlings to the larger net pen farms in Northern Ontario, which together grow 100 million meals of trout every year, 100 million. Cedar Crest also grows and fillets trout, salmon and Arctic char that they distribute all over the province through a unique home delivery network. Uh, we're excited to join RJ today as he shares the daily happenings at his family's fish farm and its importance in Ontario. So Thanks RJ, for I was going to say, we can't wait to see your farm today. With that, I'm going to leave it to Joanne and Minister Bebo to host, and I'm going to watch the tour. I'll see you at the end. Awesome, Taylor. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, RJ, welcome. We're so excited to be on your farm. I can't wait to see what happens on your fish farm. Where are we going to start? Where are we going to start the tour today, RJ? Excellent. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to, to Cedar Crest Trout Farm. Sometimes we call ourselves Spring Hills Fish. Um, thank you to everyone joining in, in classrooms and from their computers across the country. Thank you, Minister, for, for hosting as well. And thank you to, to Agriculture in the Classroom and Escape for coming for a virtual tour of the farm. Very excited to have, uh, have all you folks here. So welcome to our farm. Um, we're about two hours north of the big city of Toronto. Um, and, uh, and yes, as uh, Taylor said, we raise rainbow trout, arctic char, and coho salmon here. So often, you know, when you think about farm animals, you think about chickens, pigs, uh, or cows. But to us, our farm animals are fish. Um, and uh, does anybody want to guess why we would farm fish? If you guessed eat them, you are correct. Fish is incredibly good for you. It's incredibly good for the planet. Um, and I might be biased, but it tastes pretty darn delicious. So, um, and so 
Fish farms, like the one we're going to walk around today, um, are all across the country, um, raising all different types of fish. And as Taylor said, millions and millions of meals of fish and seafood that, uh, that Canadians eat every day from farms just like this one. So, uh, so the farm we're walking through today um, is our home farm. Our family's been raising fish here for over 30 years. Um, fish farming runs in our blood. Uh, it's, uh, it's my sister and I and our big team now uh, that are our second generation fish farmers. So, but enough of talking about the fish, why don't we go look at some of them? So, so the way that a fish farm works is actually pretty simple. Um, what we do is we borrow water from, in this case, a local river, sometimes a lake or a natural spring. Uh, it flows through the tanks, giving the fish a very constant supply of fresh water. Um, and then sometimes we recycle and reuse it, and then we send it back down to the river. The, the whole process on the farm takes about 15 minutes maximum. So what we're looking at here, we'll get the camera facing down here. These are the oldest and the biggest fish that we have on the farm. These ones are our mamas and our papas. They're about five or six years old, which is really old for a fish. And the reason that we let them get so big is because they give us all of the eggs, and that's what, you heard that right, eggs, um, that we use to hatch the five or six million little fish that we raise across all of our five farms every single year. So these fish here, they've been with us for so long that we actually get to know them quite well. They each have a chip in their neck, just like you would chip your pet. So we're actually tracking who they are, what they produce, um, all throughout the entire, uh, the, the entire time that we have fish. So, um, but I realized, you'll have to excuse me on this tour, that I actually forgot to do something this morning. Uh, a farmer's work is never done, and I forgot to feed these guys. So you guys get to join while I throw some feed in for them. So come on, come along. Awesome. So this right here is our fish feed. Looks very similar to dog kibble, but it has a, a lot more protein in it. These trout are top level predators in the wild, which means they like to eat a lot of fish and, and bugs and things like that. So this feed is mostly consists of the, the, the protein and, and other multivitamins like the ones you have. So here we go. You can see them come up to the surface. They're hungry. They are hungry. So every time we throw a, a pound of feed into the water, it produces a pound of fish. They're an incredibly efficient animal to raise in that regard. So yeah, there we go. So next up, we're actually going to head in to see the eggs and the babies that I talked about. Uh, but I hear we might have some questions first. Minister, would you like to ask the first question? Um, yes. So, um, well, I'll start by the last because it will. It, 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 you're just standing there. But how do the fish get to the to the tanks? Oh, great question. <laughs> um, perhaps we can pass by them. Maybe we'll scan a little bit over here, and you'll see some of these blue tanks just over there. So essentially, we create what's almost like a mobile aquarium. We have fresh water. We're flowing oxygen in. And we just grab a net, net them out, and put them in the tank, take them where they need to go, and drop them off. When they're small, they fit into pails or buckets. When they get bigger, we use the much bigger tanks. Hmm. And how old is your uh, older, uh, oldest fish? These ones we're looking at here are about six years old, uh, which is about the oldest that, uh, that will keep them here. When you're eating a fish um, on your dinner plate, it's usually about two to two and a half years old. So we keep them for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And how big do they have to, to be to, uh, to, to have eggs and to be? Uh... Oh, these ones are getting up to probably 10 or, or, or 12 pounds. They start giving us our uh, eggs as soon as they turn three. Um, and then they keep giving us eggs every year after that. One female fish can give us 8,000 eggs. That's enough eggs wow. that almost like the size of a small town. <laughs> and how many fish do you have? Oh, that's a good question. It depends on the time of year, but we produce about five or six million fish each year. Mm-hmm. It's impressive, eh? Yes. Yeah. 
That's awesome and incredible. Okay, I think it's time for our first brain break. So students, make sure you have your activity books ready to write down the correct answer with the brain break question. Brain break. Did you know there are many types of seafood farmed in Ontario, including rainbow trout, shrimp, lake whitefish, tilapia, perch, barramundi, and bass. Thanks for learning with us. This is when it started. I didn't know there were so many fish um, that were raised in Ontario. That's incredible. Absolutely. So where are you now, RJ? Ah, so we are in our hatchery. This is kind of like the daycare for the youngest fish. <laughs> so the fish spend about their first six months in a hatchery just like this. Um, they first start out as eggs, then they start to hatch and learn how to swim, and we keep moving them into bigger tanks. Uh, we have a few videos of the eggs that I can, uh, that I believe we can toss on the screen here. So as soon as we get those those eggs, those little orange things um, from the mama and papa fish, um, we put them in these big barrels called incubators. They spend about a month in there, and right before they're about to hatch, we move them into those trays that you see, and in those trays. Uh, you can see the little tiny fish there on my hand, um, and they have orange, little orange bellies. So that orange belly is a yolk sac uh, that has all their nutrients, which is their food, uh, for the first few weeks of their lives before they learn how to swim and start eating. Uh, you heard that right. Fish actually don't know how to swim when they're born. Similar to a little bird that has to fly out of its nest, the fish has to practice and learn how to swim. So that's what we're sort of facilitating here. So as soon as those eggs hatch into those little tiny fish, we move them out into troughs, just like these ones. So these are long little runways. They're sort of smaller versions of the tanks we saw outside. And the fish will lay on the bottom very, very gently. And they'll be wagging their tails and practicing how to swim. And as soon as they get lift off, they go to the surface. They take a big gulp of air that inflates their swim bladder. It's like a little life jacket inside, helps them float around. And, um, and then they swim for the rest of their lives. So these fish here um, are similar almost to a, a little goldfish in a tank. They only get so big as they have room in the tank. So as they start to get bigger and bigger and bigger, we keep moving them into bigger and bigger tanks. So they start out in troughs like this. There'll be about 30,000 fish in one trough. As they get a bit bigger, we'll keep splitting them so that it's only 10,000. And then they'll move on to bigger tanks until they're big enough to go to those big outdoor tanks that we saw outside. So what you can see Heather working on in the background here is one of our daily farm chores, in addition to feeding, except um, she remembers to do her chores. Um, <laughs> What she's doing here is she's actually removing all of the manure, all of the fish poop out of the tanks every single morning. She brushes down the sides of the tank and flows it to a special pipe at the bottom that sends all that fish poop out to a manure pond. And then just like other farmers, we're spreading that manure on nearby fields to grow plants and to grow vegetables. So, okay, well, that's the hatchery here. Wow. That's a lot of that's a lot of different things going on, RJ. In that <laughs> wow. So fish, it's just sort of like people where it's inherent that you learn how to walk with fish. They don't need to take swimming lessons. They just <laughs> they move into that and then they learn how to swim right away. I bet there's a ton of questions in the chat about this. But well, oh, here's one from Karen Mullally's class. Memphis wants to know how many fish can be in a tank. That's a good question. So we, with fish, we don't want too few in the tank because then actually sometimes they start um, claiming a little territory and, and calling it their own in the tank and, and, and pressuring the other fish. But we don't want too many fish in a tank because then there isn't enough oxygen in the water. 
um, and they're they're too crowded in there. So we're constantly moving fish around in the tanks. So there could be as few as five or 10,000, but as soon as they go to the fish tanks outside, the much bigger ones, we can put 250 or 300,000 in one raceway. Wow, it's hard to believe you're talking those kind of numbers. And they sound like they're all like part of your family. <laughs> you love the fish, <laughs> don't you, RJ? Absolutely, absolutely. Is there another question from a student? Oh, this is a great question from Lori Thompson's class. They would like to know how deep is the water in the tanks? Oh, so these ones here are is only about 10 or 11. Uh, so about 30 centimeters, 10 or 11 inches. Um, and outside, it's 32 inches. So um, they get bigger, you, they you, get deeper water then. They get deeper water, yes. Minister, do you have a question? Or there might be one from another class. Well, I, I see that the, the, the students have so many questions and... Uh, from uh, Beth's class area from PEI and 3D is wondering how big do the fish eggs get? How big do the fish eggs get? Well, they're actually quite small. In fact, they're probably maybe two millimeters um, wide, not big at all, maybe uh, three tenths of a gram. Um, they're quite small. So it's amazing when you look at how big a fish gets when you see it on your plate or you see it swimming around and it comes from this itty bitty tiny little egg. It's incredible, so, you have to take such good care of those eggs. Yeah, in the videos that you saw, um, you'll actually see these little black speckles on the outside of the eggs in a white line. So the, the, the egg shell is actually see-through and you can see those, those black dots, which are their eyes and the little white line, which is their spine, right through the egg shell. So cool. Okay, I'm told we have to go on to our next brain break, so I better obey the rules, RJ. Brain break. Did you know? Health Canada recommends eating seafood twice a week because it's full of many important nutrients such as protein, vitamins, and minerals that help keep our brains, eyes, and immune system healthy. Thanks for learning with us. Hi, everybody. It's Taylor here. I'm back. Um, I cannot believe how much I'm learning about fish farming today and fish themselves and just how healthy fish can be for us. Um, and oh, wait, what's that in the top left corner of your screen? Is that today's mystery word? Today we're in Ontario. So write today's word. And that word is tour. Please write that beside the map of this province in your passport. Now, where are all, there he is, there's RJ, you have <laughs> moved again. You're just like one of the fish, you just move just, around quickly. Yeah, we're where blessed by this beautiful day. Um, so we are at the bottom of the farm. So what you see behind me are not actually fish tanks, but we call these settling tanks. So all that fish poop, all that fish manure, we don't want that to go out into the water down the river. We actually collect it here at the bottom of the farm in these very low, slow flowing tanks. And then just over here to, uh, to my right is uh, um, a really super long discharge channel. So this is about a thousand feet long and it has all sorts of plant life and bugs in there that help filter the water before it returns to a local river system. Um, and so at, at our farm, water is, is our everything. So we've been raising fish here for 30 years, and we really want to take care of the surrounding environment and the surrounding ecosystem, the river and the water, because like many other farmers, we want to be farming here for another 30 or 60 or 100 years. So sometimes fish farmers get a, a bad reputation for having, a, having an impact on the environment. But in terms of having a negative impact, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, this water here, we're actually taking 
sample bottle every month of the water and we're sending it to a super fancy laboratory where they're testing it for about a dozen different things to make sure that we're not polluting the water. And then every year we have a team of scientists, uh, we call them river biologists, that come and they do all these checks in the river of the plants and of the little bugs to make sure that we're not having an impact on the environment. Our farms are, have something that we call an eco certification. That means we have an expert that comes to the farm at least every year and they're checking our water quality um, and they're checking those lab results and they're doing all of their own checks uh, to make sure that the farm isn't impacting the environment in a bad way. And while they're here, they're also checking that all our fish are treated well and taken care of so that they're happy and healthy, which is something that's really, really important to us here on the farm um, because um, there are there are farm animals. So um, sometimes you'll hear adults say, oh, well, I, I only eat wild fish. Well, now that you've been to a farm, you can tell them that that statement doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense um, because in, in a way, sometimes removing fish from the wild, from the oceans, can also be bad for the environment. What's most important when we're thinking about the fish that we eat are the eco-certifications I mentioned. Because that means that whether a fish is raised on a farm or caught in the wild, that somebody has checked that it's sustainable, eco-friendly, and good for the planet. So, but yeah. So thank you for coming to the farm. Happy to answer any more questions. Um, and you can find us on social media too, Instagram and Facebook um, at Spring Hills Fish, which is um, how, we, how we market ourselves and how we, we uh, share a lot of information about stuff that's happening at the farm. Um, and then we deliver fish all throughout uh, Ontario direct to home. So that's Spring Hills Fish. But uh, happy to answer any more questions while we're here. I am sure we have more questions in the chat. There you go, Minister. You can ask us. Do fish get sick? It's a question from feral class. Oh, that's a great question. So this farm here, because we're borrowing water from a, a local river um, that is home to all sorts of other different fish and things, um, it's similar to, to you sometimes going to school and, and interacting with somebody and getting sick as well. Um, so sometimes our fish do get sick. Um, and so we use all sorts of, of natural methods to, to deal with those. Um, sometimes we're, we're adding things like uh, it's, a, it's a carbon compound made from peat moss, which is kind of like a really um, fertile soil. Um, and that helps the, that helps the fish, um, helps their, their microbiome and all of their healthy bacteria fight whatever's in the water. Um, and then sometimes... Um, but very rarely, we will use antibiotics on the farm as well. That's often only if um, they're small fish whose immune systems can't always fight off things that come our way. But we're really, really fortunate um, here in Ontario and across Canada that we have beautiful water um, and we really understand how our farms work and how to keep our fish happy and healthy. So getting sick is something that very rarely, rarely happens. Mm -hmm. And Memphis in uh Karen, are interested to know what's the favorite part uh, in your job? What, what do you prefer to do in your job? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, I think one of my favorite parts are um, when we move the, the fish out to the troughs um, and they're not quite swimming yet. But when you look down at the tank, and sometimes they get a little scared when you're looking at them um, and they're wagging their tails and you can see them practicing to swim. So it's, uh, and then I think, you know, being able, because we have the fish for, for, you know, almost over two years before we, we harvest them, um, you really do get to notice a different group and notice some families some that come from different groups of parents are a little bit different, but you're following those fish for, for over two years. So you do tend to get pretty connected with them. Um, and I think that has to be uh, one of my favorite parts of my job. The other thing um, is something my father used to say is that... Um, the second job of every fish farmer after keeping the fish alive is education and showing people what happens here at the farm. Um, in my father's generation, when fish farming was very, very, very new, um, often fish farmers would be very quiet about what they're doing and fearful that maybe a neighbor would um, lodge a complaint or get worried about what's happening here. Um, and as we were starting out, I think that was probably warranted. But now 
we're really seeing that Canadians are really interested in fish farming, really interested in eating fish and learning where it comes from. And so we're a lot louder about what's happening here at the farm and inviting many more people for tours um, and online sharing lots of things happening on the farm and people get really excited about it. So in addition to working with the fish, it's definitely talking about the fish. Thank you for asking that question. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yes, you do. I would very... very... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I was curious to know, uh, and I've seen the, a few questions on that. What do you do during the winter? Is it the uh... <laughs> or it's different during the winter? Good question. So these tanks that you see here, um, this is river water. So the top of it does freeze over a little bit. We break some of the ice or, or um, we use these uh, blowers to keep some of the ice off so that we can feed. Um, but a lot of the, the troughs that you saw inside, that's all well water. So it stays a very consistent eight degrees Celsius all year long. So when the winter um, is actually when we spend a lot of time with the babies, the much younger ones. Um, and then in the summer, when the water warms up a little bit um, and is a little bit better for growing fish in terms of um, them growing a lot faster, um, we'll, be, we'll be working outside. But um, in the wild, a fish has to live in a river or a lake all winter long, even though it is super, super cold. And they're very, a fish is very different than a warm-blooded mammal that sort of has to keep a certain body temperature and has to eat every single day. In the wild, a fish that is at one Celsius in the river doesn't eat very much, doesn't grow very much. But as soon as it gets to be, you know, 15 or 18 degrees Celsius, their metabolism kickstarts and goes much, 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 much faster. Um, and they're eating that much more food and growing that much faster. Very different. So we're, we're often moving fish around the farms based on the water temperature so that um, uh, we're speeding up their growth or trying to get them to, 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 to get where we need them to be in terms of sizing. There's always something going on on your farm throughout the whole year. And you have, it sounds like you have lots of folks that help you and support you on the farm in different jobs and different roles that you've already talked about. So right now we're going to watch a job spotlight powered by ThinkAg and learn about a career in agriculture. Been job spotlight powered by ThinkAg. Agriculture engineers design and create the buildings, technology, and equipment used on farms. So what is it exactly that agriculture engineers do? I design tools to make farming easier and safer. I look at equipment that is used for farming and think of ways to make it better. And lastly, I test equipment to make sure it is safe for customers. I bet there were many engineers involved in designing your farm, RJ. Would that be right? Absolutely. Okay, we have come to the last section of this farm tour. And we're going to have time to ask a lot more questions. There's one in the chat already. And it's from Joanne Burt's class. She, Dax wants to know how you keep the water the right temperature in the tanks. Oh, great question. So at this farm... Um, we work with what nature gives us. So this river water is cold in the winter and fairly warm in the summer. Um, and then the indoor tanks, it's whatever water temperature or whatever temperature the water is when it comes out of the ground. So we don't manipulate the, the temperature. We have a grade three student from Carolina Wilzinski's class in St. Thomas. They're asking, what's the healthiest fish to eat, RJ? Oh, <laughs> in your opinion. That, that's a great question. So I think when choosing a fish, uh, the first thing I'd look for is that it has those eco certifications. Some of the popular ones are Aquaculture Stewardship Council, Best Aquaculture Practices, Ocean Wise. Um, because then you know that it's sustainable and safe to eat. Um, but in terms of what kind, I might be biased, but um, I'd suggest the ones that we raise here in Canada. So that's rainbow trout, um, uh, coho salmon, Atlantic salmon, Arctic char, and then we're even growing things like a barramundi or a tilapia um, and things like that as well. But um, fish is, is super high in protein, which helps keep your body working. Uh, but then it also has special omega nutrients. And so the omega fatty acids in there, um, they help boost your immune system, uh, they help your heart, and they keep your brain going. So we often say, get smart, eat fish. 
Love it. Yeah. I think the, the great thing is that we raise so many kinds of fish here in Canada that um, if you get bored of one kind, you can always switch it up and get another one. That's, um, that's what we love doing too, so that you'll, you never get sick of eating fish. A grade three student, Gemma from PEI wants to know, how long does it take for a fish to give birth to the baby eggs? Oh, um, so they'll first start laying their eggs when they're three years old. Okay. Yeah. And then how long does it take for the eggs to actually, like, is there a time period? Just, I don't know if it's called gestation or. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they'll, they'll give eggs once a year. Um, and well, we, they, they're usually ready to give them. It's over about a week timeline once a year. So we'll be watching them constantly to see if they're ready. Um, and then it takes them about a month to hatch. And then once they hatch, they, they start that swimming process. Incredible. So. Over to you, Minister. You... I can see on the side so oh, okay. many good questions. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and um, one made me, maybe you, you've seen me laugh, but one is asking, have you ever fall in your tank? Uh, <laughs> I was wondering that too. <laughs> we call that baptism. <laughs> um, because it happens to every new staff member that joins the team. I think our record is our farm manager here who's been here for uh, about six or seven years. Um, it took him almost a year and a half to fall in. Usually it happens in the first week. So um, I have fallen in these tanks more times than you can count. So, so sometimes it scares the fish and, um, and so they rush away from you down the tank. Then they, they kind of get scared at that end and they come right back at you like a big tsunami of fish. So not only do you fall in, but then this like tsunami <laughs> of trout come at you. We have a great question here, RJ, and it's from Oliver. And he'd like to know how you keep bears and other predators away <laughs> from the fish. Uh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. So the number one thing we do um, is put up um, often buildings over top of these raceways. So this is our only farm um, where you see the raceways like exposed like this. Um, and there's a lot of people in and out. We have a little fish store here. Um, we have the fam, we have the, uh, we all live here um, and we have the, all the activities at the farm. So we often don't have a lot of animals that, that come to this farm, um, but often we're, we, we put buildings up or we use a, a bird netting. We don't have any bears quite this far south, but we do have a lot of blue herons um, or mink or muskrat. So um, what we do is we have some, um, we do some trapping um, to relocate them, um, or we try and keep them out using uh, buildings or, or things like bird netting. So Interesting. Um, it is definitely a big buffet to them. So <laughs> you can often see when the, the young blue herons discover this for the first time um, and then they they get scared away so <laughs> this is a great question from bishop field class and they want to know how did you get your first fish to the farm and did you catch it from a lake <laughs> no not quite so um our, our parents bought this property here um, in 1986, uh, it was an old fly fishing club. Um, it has a very special river on it that's all spring fed. So it's a bit colder. It's really good for brook trout. Um, and, uh, and it took them nine years to get all the permits and finish all the construction to build here. But at that time, and still, there's lots of other farms. So we just simply brought fish in from other farms. Our breeders here, those mamas and papas, um, they actually date back to the 1950s those family lines when we first domesticated rainbow trout here in Ontario. So that's about 25 different generations of fish. Um, and the reason that we use those instead of trying to catch wild ones is there's just a few differences. They, they can um, deal with being handled. Um, they like the tanks. Um, they, they understand sort of the feeding through the pellets. There's, there's a few things that, um, that we, are good about the, the, the breeders that we have here. They can also handle some of the water temperatures that we have um, and things like that. So versus trying to get fish from the wild. Incredible. Well, we have time for only one more question before we need to let Minister Bebo go to her real job. 
<laughs> and that question is going to be for Muhammad wants to know what your favorite fish is, RJ. Oh, that's a good, good question. So um, for the majority of our history, we've only raised rainbow trout. So for the longest time, the trout was my favorite fish. Um, but as soon as COVID came, uh, really disrupted things for us. And that's when we started doing our own processing, which just means filleting the fish and, and freezing them so that we can sell them to people to, to cook up and eat right away. Um, that's when we started getting into different other different kinds of fish, like the Arctic char and the salmon. Um, and so I have to say that I think I have trouble choosing any one fish. Um, I really like just constantly switching it up. So as soon as we got Arctic char for the first time, it's all I ate. But now, you know, I switch between them. And the coho salmon are very new. So we've been eating a bunch of those, but now we're just um, eating through. So That's awesome. Well, we have unfortunately, we have to stop our question period for now. I'm sorry we didn't get to everyone. There were so many great questions. And we learned so much from you, RJ. Before we uh, let us wrap up with the minister, let's take a picture of all of us waving. And we want all the kids from all across Canada to wave their hands and we'll have a big picture with the minister. And I'm sure we've got that now. Thank you, RJ, so much. And I'll let the minister have the last word. Well, thank you so much, RJ, for this visit. We learned a lot. It seems to be so exciting to work in a fish farm. So enjoy it. And I hope that many uh, students have been watching carefully and that we will have a lot of farmers in the years to come and also engineer and you know in agriculture there is so many opportunities from the farm to the scientific laboratory and with all these new technologies so i hope a lot of you will get interested in agriculture because we need you to to eat each and every day and take care of you take care of yourself bye bye Thank you, Minister. As I said, you're a wonderful support for agriculture education in Canada. We want to thank you so much for joining us, making time. And make sure you say hello to the Prime Minister Trudeau for us this morning when you go to work in the big cabinet. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. I will do it in about 15 minutes. I'll be with him. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Awesome. Yeah. Didn't... Didn't we learn so much today, Joanne? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I've never been on a fish farm before, so it was pretty exciting to be there. And I was so amazed at, well, first the numbers of fish mm -hmm. that RJ has on his farm and also all the different kinds. I had no, had no idea, but I think I'm going to have fish for supper tonight. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Definitely. And I think they just keep expanding the types of fish that they're working with. And uh, it was really cool to learn about some of the environmental practices they have in place to make sure that uh, everything's safe on their farm. Um, yes. And, and so all of the jobs careers. are going to make yeah. it happen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what did some of the students from across Canada learn today? We would like to hear mm -hmm. from you. Let us know in the chat what you learned. And, um, you know, it'll be really interesting. I'm sure it was probably a farm that not many students have have uh, visited before. Taylor, I understand you have visited RJ's farm and you took your whole staff there to learn about fish farming. Yeah, it was a great experience. Uh, RJ and his family are such welcoming people and we actually got to have lunch with them too um, and enjoy some of their fish. And I've actually ordered his fish to my house as well. Um, so uh, just very cool to see uh, where the farm has continued to grow since we first visited back a couple of few, a few years ago. Kayla said that they learned that fish can get sick, and, and that's true. We often don't think about that. Fish are just like people, as are all the animals, so it's important that farmers understand and learn and know how to take care of their fish when they're sick and any of their animals. So very cool to see that. And oh, we learned that aquaculture means raising fish. Big word. Yes. Some of these other comments here I'm seeing. I learned that they spread fish manure on fields. That <laughs> is pretty cool. Uh, they, and I think, again, that shows the environmental practices of fish farming. They're using every part of the fish. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So now, Taylor, do you remember what the mystery word was? I don't know. I think it might be up in the top corner of our screen again. The word is <laughs> tour. Absolutely. And I'm sure there's all sorts of students watching today from across Canada that have watched all the tours. And if you've watched them all up until now, you will have figured out the mystery sentence on your passport. And that is that the great Canadian farm tour taught me about Canada's interesting, diverse and exciting food story. And I hope that all the students and teachers that have been watching feel that way. Taylor, thanks so much for making time to join us and for hosting us in your beautiful province. It looks like you have a beautiful day today in Ontario. And thank you for introducing us to RJ and for being part of our tour today. Thank you so much for having me. I was so excited to be here and learn more about fish farming. And I want to say, uh, share a huge thank you again to our, our farmer today, RJ and his family for having us on their farm and for all the students and teachers who joined us to learn more. Thanks, Taylor. Well, They thought they could cut us off, Taylor, but they <laughs> I cannot imagine a more successful month traveling across the country, visiting 11 different farms. Agriculture in the Classroom Canada has had so much fun bringing all of you, all of you students and teachers, to all of these farms in different provinces. Teachers, you will be hearing from our team very soon as we get ready to launch our great Canadian farm tour teaching resource. We're really excited that all of our tours are also getting translated into English and French and even into English and French sign language. So when you visit uh, our tours again to watch again on YouTube, you will have that opportunity to have them translated. We hope that, you know, you've had just as much fun as we have had on this road trip across Canada and that you've learned a lot more about where your food comes from. And maybe you'll start to think about trying some different things. Like maybe tonight you'll have Ar Arctic char for supper. Anyway, thank you so much for participating in our great Canadian farm tour. This is goodbye from Agriculture in the Classroom Canada. Until we see you again, and hopefully that's sooner than later. Thank you, Taylor, and goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much, everybody.